Okay, so my struggles with Windows are continuing. Let's hope that it doesn't do any more crazy stuff. All right, so so that th those things are quite non-trivial in this fact, you know. I'm sorry, it's not recording. Huh? I thought it was recording. Are you sure? It's recording. Huh? Are you sure? See, the audio is also moving. See, there is this border thing in green that's going off. Can you see this? That means it's recording. Okay. All right. So, is it okay? It's okay, no? Okay. So this is quite a non-trivial result. I want you to think about it for a while, and it's it's uh, it's something rather uh, interesting. But of course, the multiplication is in is an F. Okay, remember that it's an F, and this has to be true. In fact, one can one can extend this a little bit and give uh, and give a slightly more interesting result. So the only thing I'm saying here is non-zero. How do I include zero? Okay, so what you can do is, if you if you multiply by x on both sides, you just include zero. So, so basically, x power p power m minus x will factor as product of let's say alpha and f x minus one. Okay, so all the elements of the field. Okay, so it's quite a non-trivial uh, result, and, uh, and and so this is uh, this is interesting. Okay. So I want you to keep this in mind. Okay, so 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 we're going to exploit this result quite extensively to understand our field much much better, and in fact, understand polynomials over finite fields much much better. Once we get to the bottom of it, we'll see that polynomials over finite fields are very, in a way, very simple objects. You can quickly find out where the roots will be. You know, you can easily enumerate everything about them. That's because of this property. Okay, the fact that uh, these things happen. So before that, I want to give a quick uh, write, write down a quick result. Uh, if you have f being an arbitrary field, and if you look at some polynomial let's say p of x and f x, okay, and if you factor it into irreducibles, okay, over f, okay, or any other field for that matter, so it could be a larger field that contains f also. Essentially, that factorization is unique. Okay, factorization into irreducibles is essentially unique. I have to say essentially because you can always pull out scalars in the factorization and then make it look different, but up to the scalar multiplying outside, it is essentially unique. Okay, so in f x there is unique factorization. Okay, p of x factors into into irreducibles uh, in a unique way. I'll say some G X, where G is a extension of F. Okay, so this is like the factoring of numbers. Okay, so if you have any integer, it factors into primes in a unique way. There's no two ways in which it can happen. Same way for polynomials, also it's true. Okay, so this fact, along with the fact that the polynomial x bar p bar m minus x factors in a certain way. Is very useful and powerful to visualize. Okay, so it, it gives you a lot of handle on how the polynomials over finite fields work. Okay, and polynomials over finite fields are quite important for classical codes. You should have a good feel for what they are, and this this fact is quite important. We'll see. I mean, as as I develop it further, you'll see that it becomes more clear. But at least initially, this is the power. Okay, so because you have unique factorization over fields, over uh, polynomials with coefficients from fields, and this polynomial x bar p bar m minus x factors in this specific way. We have a lot of powerful results for polynomials. In fact, for instance, a degree m polynomial over uh, over a finite field, you will know exactly where to find all its roots. Given the degree of a polynomial, you will know that there will be one field, okay, some extension of the field of the coefficients, possibly, in which all the roots of the polynomial are. Okay, so it's an interesting kind of result. It's not as interesting as the completeness result for complexes, right? For complex numbers, you know. But for every polynomial, the complex coefficients has one root in the complexes. Okay, so that's a very powerful statement. You cannot make a statement like that. There's no one field which has all the roots, but you can say precisely which extension field will have the roots. Okay, so that gives you a very nice handle. Yes. F of x also g is some extension. So f is a trivial extension of f. Okay, see, it might be. So for instance, I, I'll come to it. So there will be a polynomial which is probably say. Factors into two polynomials, irreducibles in F. 
you go to a larger field, maybe the number of irreducibles will increase, we'll have more roots. Okay, so the factorization will change depending on which field you go to, but in any given field, it's unique. You cannot have two different factors. Okay, that's the idea. Alright, so, so fields are not the only objects over which this happens. In fact, in algebra you will see that there, there are a few other objects on which factorization is unique and it's, it's an interesting field of study. Okay, so people look at that also. Alright, so let's proceed. And uh, so, so to understand our, our structure further, okay, so we have uh, an element, we know it's, uh, we, know, we know that there is a primitive element, and there are also other elements which may not be primitive, okay, but there are all these elements and the multiplicative order is an important idea that you should keep in mind, okay, so in the order of, uh, order the multiplicative order of any element or like I said, an order of an element will divide p power m minus 1, right, so that much we know, and that's a, that's a crucial idea, okay. So, so the next thing, is to understand polynomials because we so you remember the reason why I am going again to polynomials is we started the specific construction with the polynomial. Okay, so this is the general field, and then I gave you a specific construction. What is the specific construction? Okay, the specific construction started with the with the polynomial i x, which was degree n and irreducible level. P, right? So this is what we started with, and then we said this object is actually F P P power M. Okay, so we said this guy, which is what A zero plus A one x so on to A m minus one x power m minus one, and the A out is coming from Z P. Okay, what is the addition and multiplication? Addition is P modulo p polynomial addition, right? And what is multiplication? Multiplication is modulo pi x, right? And maybe I used alpha. Did I use pi alpha? I might have used alpha. It doesn't matter what I use, right? So if you do modulo pi x, then I actually showed that this is a field with p power m elements, okay? So first of all, to make sure that this construction is even feasible, I should have a pi of x. Okay, and then depending on different irreducibles, maybe I get different fields. All these questions are still open, right? So we don't know how many such fields are there. Maybe there is some other construction. How do we know? Okay, so we'll essentially show that all those things are not possible. We'll show that there's a unique field up to some isomorphism F P bar. Okay, so it's a powerful result. And to get that, we should know something about polynomials. Okay, so that's that's the next thing we're going to look at. And the critical idea connecting polynomials to fields is this notion of a minimal polynomial as an element. Okay, so suppose I have uh, so, so we are going to talk about minimal polynomials. Okay, so this is a crucial idea. Okay. Suppose I have beta belonging to f to finite field. Okay. Let's say that uh, f has so, so, so the notion here is a bit more general that I am going to define it in a specific way. So let us say solves of f is p power n. Okay, so we will look at this and uh, we will define the minimal polynomial of beta over z p is the least degree polynomial in so so this is, should be in the p x with beta as a root. Okay, so there's a lot of things in this definition that you have to digest. So let's uh, walk through this a bit slowly. So first of all, the minimal polynomial is for an element beta which belongs to what? Which belongs to the field F. Okay? But then I am saying the minimal polynomial is for beta over Z P. Okay? Which means the polynomial I am looking for should have coefficients that are only in Z P. It cannot have coefficients outside of Z P which could be in F. Okay? So if I do not put that restriction, if I say minimal polynomial of beta over F, the answer is a bit trivial. What will be the answer? What is the least degree polynomial with coefficients from S? which has beta as a root. 
x minus theta. Okay, I know already. Okay, so it's not a big deal. I don't have to worry about it. And that's a valid definition actually. But then I'm not asking for, I'm not allowing the coefficients to come from my field f. I'm saying the coefficients has to be only from zp. Okay, then I have to tell you, will there be any such polynomial? I mean, asking for the least degree polynomial. First of all, is there any polynomial for which coefficients are from zp and theta is the root? Do you know of any polynomial? x power p power m minus x. I know for that, theta is the root. Okay, so this definition makes sense because because theta is the root of what? x power p power m minus x which actually belongs to zpx. The coefficients are from z. Okay, plus 1 and minus 1. They eminently belong to zp. There is no problem. So that is that is uh, that is the reason why this makes sense. But then, beta may be a root of a smaller degree polynomial. Okay? It may not be a, a degree p power m. Okay? P power m may be very large. Maybe there is a degree which is smaller than that. Okay? So the, the minimum polynomial is the smallest such thing. But then I have to be make it a bit more specific here. Okay? I can't say the minimum polynomial till I make it unique. The only problem here is I might be able to multiply by scalars and get La different polynomials. So what usually is done is people have this word monic. What is monic? The largest degree term is one. Okay, the largest degree, the, the largest coefficient of the largest power term, that thing is one. Okay, so so you choose one such case. Okay, you cannot show, you can now sh you can now show that the minimal polynomial is unique. Okay, I can say the minimal polynomial. Because if there are two such polynomials, what can I do? If they are both monic. Both are beta as a root. And I can subtract one from the other, I will get a strictly lower degree polynomial for which also beta will be a root and that will violate the minimality of the degree. Okay, so I can show that it will be the minimal polynomial. So it is okay to define it that way. Okay? So all these things you have to pass when you when I write a statement like this. Okay, in engineering you might be used to happily accepting such statements. If you want to be a little bit more careful, you have to, you have to make sure that all these things make sense and all of them do make sense. There is no problem. Okay? So if you want an example, uh, the BSP distress signal processing examples I can give you. Okay, so usually, if you, you look at roots of your for your filters, right? So you look at uh, zeros and poles for your filter, and if you want your filter to have real coefficients, but you still want a complex root, what do you do? Okay. So you construct a real polynomial for which that is a root. But what is the penalty you have to pay? You have to also take the complex conjugate root. Okay. So if I have, for instance. I, the element I which belongs to the complexes, what will be its minimal polynomial over complexes? The x minus I. What will be its minimal polynomial over the reals? X squared plus 1. Okay, like degree 2, sir. Okay. But interestingly, in complex, the minimal polynomial will always have either degree 1 or degree 2. Okay. If it is real itself, then the degree will be 1. If it is not real, the degree will be 2. You know, the degree 2 always has. Okay. So, here we will see some interesting results. Okay. So, the question is, uh, we are going to now look at minimal polynomials and without explicitly finding the minimal polynomials, we are going to derive some properties for it, okay? And then we will see how, how easy it is to find it, it is it's not very hard, okay? Alright, so, so first of all notation, okay? So I usually use m of beta for minimal polynomial, okay? So there are lots of things that are consumed and these are not said over what field it is. Okay, so usually it will be clear. And so I'm assuming I'll just put m of beta. Otherwise you'll have to say m p of beta and then change that. Later on we'll do a mild generalization of this definition where it will become a little bit more complicated. But for now we'll just keep it as m of beta. M of beta is the minimal polynomial of beta, assuming that all the involved fields are clear. Okay. Alright. So there are quite a few interesting properties for this. First property, uh, I do it in any particular sequence of missing. Okay, so it's fine. Okay. So first property is if uh, f of x belongs to some ZPX and f of beta is zero, then turns out m of x. Oh, did I say m, m of beta? Oh, that's a bad notation, I'm sorry. <laughs> I want it to be 
on beta of x. <laughs> Sorry, that's a bit of confusion. Put some x in there. The polynomial. Okay, so on beta of x. Okay, then on beta of x, then divide f of x. Okay, so that's the first result we'll show. So if you have a minimal polynomial, so and if you see that there is some other polynomial f of x in set P x, so the coefficients of f of x are in set P, and so if somebody tells you that beta is actually a root of f of x, then what has to happen? This entire minimal polynomial should be a factor of f of x. Okay, so this is a, this is an interesting result to show. How would you prove it? Any ideas on proving this? Yeah, you have to use remainder. Okay, so you have to use division with remainder. Okay, so you take f of x and divide with m beta of x. You get a quotient and a remainder. Remainder's degree, remember, is strictly less than the degree of m beta of x. Now you put x equals beta. Okay, so you see that the remainder has beta as a root. Okay. So that will violate, if f of x is non-zero, then that will violate the minimality of the degree that you had for the minimal polynomial and that proves this. Okay, so you just use the definition and prove this result. It's not very much. So division is what you use and you prove this. Okay, prove this division. I'm not writing down all the steps, but this is important. Okay, I'll, I'll do a few properties and then give you an example. Okay, so I know examples have not come so far. So a few properties are good and then we can do the examples. The next property is degree of m beta of x is less than or equal to m. Okay, so remember what is this m? M came from here. Okay, size of f is p power m. Okay, so m was like the power of p. So you might wonder here, from this example, I told, told you that maybe the degree of the minimal polynomial is very very large, p power m or something. But turns out it's only at most m. Okay, so the proof of this. A little bit more involved. Let me see. Any ideas how to prove this? Uh, well, that's a bit hard. I don't want to use pi of x now. See, I don't know if my field now has constructed from the pi of x. Okay, don't don't think of the specific construction. I don't want to use those properties now. This is some abstract finite field that somebody has told us there. And all the definitions I made are with respect to that field. Okay, so this is not necessarily for the specific construction. Okay, so here the trick is to use the vector space idea. Okay, so that's why we use. So what you do is you look at these these elements: one beta, beta squared, one two beta power n minus one, and then beta power n. Okay, these are all elements of what? There are elements of f, and f is a M dimensional vector space over Z P. How many elements do I have here? M plus one. So what should happen? Definitely, they should be linearly dependent. Okay. So these these are M plus one elements of a finite field of a of a vector space, which is only M dimensional over Z P. Which means it will be linearly dependent over Z P. Okay. So these are linearly dependent over Z P. Okay. And that's enough to prove my claim. What does that mean? That means there exists. Okay, what does this mean? Linear dependence. There exists a zero, a one, a m, n z p such that what? Such that a zero times one, which I'll call as a zero, plus a one beta, plus a two beta squared, plus so on till a m beta power m equals what? Zero. Which means I have explicitly showed a degree m polynomial for which beta is a well. I have not explicitly showed that. Just shown the existence of a degree m polynomial for which beta is a. So I can conclude that the degree of minimal polynomial for any element in my finite field F has to have degree less than or equal to n. It cannot be greater than. N. I cannot show this is equal to n though. Only less than or equal. It could be a lower degree polynomial. Right? Right? Oh, this is. True. Okay, and that's QED. All right. Yeah. So once again, don't get confused by the specific construction. I told you that that's a unique kind of construction. You can prove many results for that, but we haven't yet showed that. Okay. So we were still proceeding with the uh, abstract finite field that we had, and we want to show as many results as possible. Okay. So this is the second property, and uh, let's see. There are 
There's one more nice thing I can show, but I just don't think if I should. Yeah, I mean, maybe I should prove something else. Yes, is there any question? No? Okay. So the next property is, uh, is quite interesting. Okay. So So, 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 yeah, so let me, let me show this, okay, so suppose you look at n beta of x, okay, uh, it turns out m beta of beta power p is also equal to 0. So that's the next property. Okay, so you take beta and raise it to the power p. P is remember my characteristic, and then you substitute beta power p in the minimal polynomial for beta. Okay, then it turns out that beta power p is also a root for the minimal polynomial of p. Okay, so how do you prove this? Proof goes like this. It's not very hard. Okay. So the first thing to show is so you need a kind of a lemma. So one of the things you should know is the following. Okay. So if you have uh, if you have any polynomial, let's say a zero plus. Okay. So let me start with the simplest possible statement. Then we <coughs> x plus y whole part p is actually equal to x bar p plus y bar p for x y in Okay, so if you have two guys x and y that take values in this finite field s which has characteristic p, I take x plus y, so this is like I have to prove this. Okay, so if I take x plus y and raise it to the part p, I will get x part p plus y part p. All the other terms will go off to 0. The reason is if you take any other term that way, some term in the middle, it will have this term p choose i. So what is p choose i? p times p minus 1 sample p minus i plus 1 divided by 192 into so on to the i. Okay. What about this p now? It will it's a prime number, so it will never get cancelled by any of these things. But of course I know p choose i is also an integer. So somehow all these cancellations will happen 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 with the other terms, but this p will always remain. Okay. So this is actually some a times p. Or maybe I'm using okay. So a times b. Okay, so it's a multiple of p which is equal to 0 in s. Okay. So all the other coefficients that you have for the other powers, they will all go to 0 in s. So it's a bit difficult to think about it, but that's true. It's because also because p is prime. If p is not prime, then this won't be true. If p is prime, it's a characteristic of the field. So any p choose i is actually a multiple of p and goes to 0 in s. Okay. So x plus y raised to the power p is equal to x part p plus y part p. So now I can generalize this. Okay, so if I have say x plus y plus z raised to the power p, what will I get? x part p plus y part p plus z part p. That's very easy to do, right? So you split it as two terms, raise it and then raise it further further further. So that is always true. So now what happens is if I take any polynomial a0 plus a1 plus a1x plus a2 x squared plus 1 to say some a m x bar m okay and then raise it to the power p what will happen individually I can do it as long as I know that I am only going to put values for x and a which are in fields of characteristic p I can individually raise the power okay so I will get this okay so I get a 0 power p plus a 1 power p x power p plus a 2 power p x bar 2 p so okay now in addition if I tell you that a i belongs to z p okay will any of this simplify further yeah so in z p what do I know a i power p remember a i power p will be equal to a i in z p right so every element Raised to the part p is equal to itself. Right. So that's true in zp. And any any field for that matter, right? So remember we had this equation x part p par m is equal to x in s, right? So in any field, 
So ratio to the size of the field, you'll get the same element itself. So this actually becomes equal to, okay, so if you call this polynomial as Ax, this is actually A of x bar. Okay. So that's the interesting result. Maybe I should rewrite it. A of x bar p for A of x in the Tx. Okay, so this is equal to A of x bar p. Okay. All right. So that's not enough to prove my statement. I could I have to keep uh, going further. Okay. So 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 I'm going to use this. Now I can repeatedly use this. Okay. So if I do it once again, what will happen? If I do a of x bar p squared, what will happen? a of x bar p squared. Only in x you will have the power. In a you will never have the power. Okay, so this is true in general. So a of x power p power i equals a of x to the power p power i. Okay? Is that okay? So Okay, so looks like I shouldn't have jumped to this property directly, but anyway, so that's a, that's a good property to show. Okay, so now, okay, so so is this enough to show the result that I want? Hmm. First time is enough? Why? <coughs> okay, so maybe this is enough. Okay, so maybe. So, so now, if you use, if you, instead of a of x, if you put m beta of x, you set a of x equals m beta of x, and that property, what do you get? m beta of x raised to the power p equals m beta of x bar p, right? Now we put x equals beta. What happens? On the left hand side you will get 0, on the right hand side you will get what you want. Okay, so put x equals beta to get m beta of beta bar p to be equal to 0. Okay, so now we can repeatedly do this, do this, okay? So beta is a root, beta bar p is a root, I can in fact generalize this a little bit. Okay, so in fact there is a more general statement more generally this statement is true so if you have a of x in zp any polynomial not necessarily minimal or something is alpha in f is a root of a of x so then what else is true alpha power p is also a root Okay, so this is the more general statement. I used it specifically for the minimal polynomial to get one result, but in general it's true. It's because the coefficients of insert p, if you have a root in f, then the alpha raised to the power p is also a root. So now I can repeat it. Okay, so, so alpha power p now is a root, which means what? Alpha power p squared is a root. So, so on I can keep on going till that alpha power p power something becomes one. So I can keep doing that. So I don't know where it will become one. It will become one somewhere, but wherever it becomes one. Okay. If it is a primitive element, I didn't say primitive. If it's not primitive, then it's okay. Okay. So now we can repeatedly do this. Remember, so alpha p is a root, so so on. Alpha p square is also a root, and so on. Okay. Remember that. That's true. I'm sorry. Need not come. Alpha will come again in the sequence. Yeah, so wherever it comes, you won't get anything new. Whenever it comes. Okay. So so the idea of this is called what's called conjugates. Okay, so this notion of conjugates that you have seen in general over the complex over the reals, now you can generalize. So if you have alpha belonging to F, then alpha part P, alpha part P square, so on are conjugates of alpha. Okay, over Zp. Okay. 
So these are called conjugates because for any polynomial for which alpha is a root, these also have to be roots. Okay. So the same thing is true in the complex of the reals, right? If you have a real coefficient equation, and if you know that a complex number is a root, then what else is a root? The conjugate is also a root, has to be. It's the same thing here, except that now there might be more than one conjugate for each element. Okay. I think we're coming up to 140, so I'm going to stop here for today. But uh, so 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 keep this in mind. So we're looking right now at minimal polynomials, and these will be uh, give us uh, important connections to the general construction, the specific construction, and then we'll generalize them. Okay, so we'll stop for for your.